Now, it may not seem obvious, but the force that holds these bubbles together is the same force that allows this flame to burn, electromagnetism. It's the force that allows us to push and pull things, the force that allows us to see everything in the world around us, and the force that allows your TV set to work. Electromagnetism is the force that holds electrons in place around the atomic nucleus and holds the atoms and molecules in place in my body. It also causes electrons to repel each other. I've used the word electromagnetism to describe a single force, but electricity and magnetism seem at first sight to be very different phenomena. The magnetism that makes this top levitate seems to have nothing in common with these electrical sparks. The Greeks knew that if you rubbed a piece of amber with fur, it would pick up feathers. They also knew that certain rocks attracted iron, but they had no idea that the two were related. Both protons and electrons spit out short-lived bursts of photons. Oppositely charged particles absorb each other's light. And this draws the particles together. This attractive force is known as electromagnetism. Atoms themselves would not hold together if it weren't for electromagnetic forces. Electromagnetism also causes atoms to stick together. To create the molecules that form us and everything around us. Electromagnetism is responsible for the very structure of our matter, atoms holding together. Molecular bonds in our bodies, those are bound together by electromagnetic interactions and therefore they're bound together by light. Electromagnetism not only holds everything together, it makes things feel solid. When you touch something, that's the electromagnetic force as well. We have electrons in our atoms and they repel each other. And when you try to touch something, those forces keep you from actually physically touching. Let's switch it on. Let's see what it does. Through this coil of thick wire, we're about to pass a huge alternating electric current. On top is a one kilogram aluminum plate. So we hear this noise. What's that noise? It's the vibration of the plate because it's vibrating at uh, two times the frequency of this one. Of this, of this Whoa! Okay. This weird noise has been going on for about a minute now.
so creepy. That's <laughs> how To find out, I've come to the place where it all started, the Royal Institution in London. This is the key to Faraday's magnetic lab. It's amazing that that lock still works. From the 1870s it almost became a storeroom, which is why it survived, and it survived intact, all the joinery, giant electric magnet, uh, exactly the same as Faraday. Uh, so this is it. exactly as Faraday would have had. That's right, yeah. In Faraday's time, it was known that electric current creates a magnetic field. But it remained an open question whether the reverse is possible, if a magnetic field could generate electric current. Faraday answered this question with his most famous apparatus. Faraday's electromagnetic induction ring, which is this. In August 1831, Faraday wrapped two coils of insulated wire around this iron ring. By 1831, you could not go down to your local electric hardware shop and ask for some meters of insulated wire. You had to insulate the wire as you went, and so as you pushed and pulled the wire out of the ring, you had to insulate it. It takes ten working days, which is a huge investment of time. But the investment paid off. 
When Faraday connected a battery to one of the coils, he saw a brief pulse of current in the other coil. And when he disconnected the battery, he saw a pulse of current in the other direction. He realized that current was induced in the second coil only when the magnetic field through it was changing. And if they hadn't been wrapped on the same ring, Faraday may have noticed that the two coils repel each other when the current is induced, and that's due to the interaction of their magnetic fields. Which brings us back to this. Through the bottom coil, we are passing a huge electric current, 800 amps, which alternates in direction 900 times per second. This ensures there will always be a changing magnetic field above the coil. Instead of a second coil, we're using the aluminum plate, but the principle is the same. The changing magnetic field induces currents in the plate that create an opposing magnetic field, so it levitates. Oh. <laughs> How awesome is that? This current is not only good for levitating the plate, it can also make light bulbs glow. Your gift. Oh, thank you. Oh, that is cool. Not, not too close because I will uh, burn the, the, the arms. Can I put it there? Yep. And just as current in a toaster element heats it up, the induced current in the plate dissipates its energy as heat. Thank you. Yeah, to see the, the toaster train. Check out how hot this plate is. Oh, that is nuts. Is this your favorite demo? Tell me this is not the best dinner table centerpiece. It levitates, it gives you light, and you can cook on it. And all the while, you're demonstrating Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction.